Hi, this is Cheryl back with you from Farmhouse Frugally. Today's challenge is what wood you make. I have wood items, and this first one is a broken mirror. Yes, I dropped the mirror, broke the glass, and the wood is split. I had seen something at an antique store years ago, and I thought perhaps I could reproduce it from memory. Um, I wanted to start, obviously, by taking care of the crack. So I had some wood filler and I just went ahead in two or three places. It was chipped and, and cracked, obviously. So I just filled that with some wood filler and let that dry. And then once that was dry, just lightly sanded that back. And then um, I took out just a pencil and a hot glue gun. And I just drew a little design on the top. And then followed around as best I could with the hot glue. Um, this could be really good. Uh, if you have a very steady hand and a lot of time, you could really create some pretty interesting things that you can then paint over. I just wanted a little bit of detail at the top, and I'm showing you a little bit here, but you'll see the final result at the end. The nice thing about that, obviously, is hot glue dries very quickly, and then I took out my linen clay-based chalk paint, and I went ahead and painted this entire thing. And it covered um, very well. I was uh, able to cover that with just one coat. And once this is completely dry, then I started looking around my house to see what I might have to give me the rest of what I was hoping to create from this. It took me a couple of days to come up with something, although at the end of the day, it was kind of staring me right in the face. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so yes, once this is dry, I took out some Annie Sloan clear wax and I mixed it with some of the antique wax uh, by Waverly and just mixed that up really good. And once I had that done, I went around the entire thing and kind of did it with a little bit of a heavy hand because I wanted this to be very vintage, very much looking like it had been around for a while. If you are not a fan of the vintage look, certainly you do not uh, need to do anything here. You could wax it or leave it, depending on the paint that you use. You might need some kind of a finish on your paint. Um, but I think that the darker wax brings out the detail, one, the glue details that I just created, but also all the little bits and pieces of, of millwork that's done uh, on this mirror. So that is um, what I did with that. And uh, so it's very much darker antiquing than I generally do. Um, but that's just the look I happen to be going for with this piece. So you can see the detail on here with the glue and how much fun you could have if you went around, um, you know, if you really have a good, you know, artist eye and a steady hand, not, not <laughs> really my forte, but anyway, so I did that and then I let that dry. And then I took, I went into my kitchen. Now this is the thing that's been sticking in my face for, you know, years. I have this beautiful blue grain bucket filled with these wired, very wired florals that I believe I got at Hobby Lobby, but I'm not positive. I think that it was Hobby Lobby. Um, and I just have two of them and they filled that green bucket well, but they're kind of always in the way every time I want to go into the microwave. So I was thinking that it's probably not a bad idea to put something else in that anyway. Very pink. So I'm not sure uh, there. That's kind of why I kept hemming and hawing. Do I really want this to be in the pinks? But at the end of the day, I kind of like the way that it came out. So I just wound the two on the oval frame. And then I found this little nest filled with eggs that I pulled off some garland, some Easter garland years ago. And then I pulled out some of my green moss and literally just wrapped with wire that nest to the flowers and the flowers to the frame and stuck some moss here and there. That could not have been easier. So you will have to let me know what you think about this. Um, in order for me to hang it on the wall, I am going to have to create a different um, hanging system for the back. So for right now, I am just propping it up here so that you can get a good look at it. So please let me know what you think of my broken mirror. This is part of a collaboration with Zena from OK at Home DIY. 
Connie's Wood Shop, and they are the hosts. And the guest host today is Crafting with JC. I will put their information in the description box. The second wood item, I found this little stool at the dump, and I thought it would be cute for my granddaughter, who will need a little help getting to the big girl potty. <laughs> So I started by taking that outside and giving that two coats of a latex cream colored paint that I had already mixed up and then taking my sander and sanding around the edges. I had one or two little pieces of an IOD transfer left. I had started most of it I used in her bedroom on a dresser that you will see a little bit of here, but I'll try to remember to link that I made that about uh, probably a year ago. Um, and so just on the bottom shelf, I added the little fawn and just burnished that back real good. Now, because this is gonna be a step stool, this is gonna require several coats um, on top of that to protect it. But believe it or not, I found this cute little booklet of animals and mushrooms um, and birds at the dollar store. And um, I picked that up. There's like, you know, at least a dozen um, pictures in it. And then I ended up deciding on the mushrooms. So I just took my scissors and really closely cut that, fussy cut that to um, the decoupage on the top because I didn't want any of the white showing. So that is the thing that probably took the most time. <laughs> um, so I just went ahead with my um, Mod Podge and added the green little fern things and the mushrooms and then I added a couple more mushrooms to hide some of those screws and that was pretty much all I did to this except to cover the entire piece uh, top and bottom piece with a second and third layer of decoupage I could have sprayed this but it was raining um, so I just used decoupage so that when she does stand on it it will, you know, not get ruined. And then I had a couple of leaves and the nice thing about leaves is you can put them together and make them look like ground. And here it is together with her dresser. So please let me know what you think of my second wooden item, taking me on to this cedar trunk. Now this cedar trunk is wood inside, uh, leather or pleather outside with some plastic handles and some brass fittings. Very 70s, not my style at all, but I have these phenomenal bed posts that I have had for years and I have wanted to put the legs on this trunk. So I um, picked this trunk up. It's funny how you'll hang on to something for years before you find the right project for it to go with. I believe I paid $4 for those for four of those leg posts. Um, at a yard sale probably eight or ten years ago. This trunk came from the dump and I have had that probably in my basement for a year and a half or two years and I definitely wanted to marry these two pieces but I had to start by painting this trunk with two good coats of that same latex paint that I used on the stool and because I am not a fan of brass and i um, definitely did not want the leather or the uh, plastic rather handle showing i opted to paint every inch of it initially i had planned to go a whole nother way with this but i have this beautiful prima redesign transfer called rose celebration and it is a very large transfer and I decided that I would use just a couple pieces of it and cut it up, um, which took a little bit of creativity because it was designed to fit together and to um, match one big dresser or something like that. Um, but I opted to just cut that and use it in parts and pieces because I don't want my pieces to look like everybody else's piece um, or to look like what it had on the, you know, on the front of the tube. So I started by laying down my transfer. Now this is a day or two after I painted the trunk at least. Um, usually if you let your paint cure really well then the transfer um, will stick really well. Not so in this case. 
I knew I was going to have to put a poly coat down, so I gently, as much as I could, gently removed it, trying not to destroy it, because, of course, parts of it did stay down, and so that is a bummer. But sprayed it with a couple coats of poly, and once that was fully dry, then I knew it would stick really well, and then went and started all over again. Now, thankfully, there's a couple pieces that I had cut around the little uh, latch to the trunk that are in the same color, so I'm able to fill those in, uh, those couple missing pieces in that. You, you can't even see it from here, but there's like one or two little pieces missing on the rows, um, so I'm actually able to fill that with the cut piece. So that actually worked out pretty well. So I'm sure you've seen people use these transfers a thousand times, but just in case you haven't, it comes with a stick uh, that you know kind of allows you to to push down on the plastic part of the transfer until it adheres and you just gently go back and forth. Now, I personally like to catch a bubble, an air bubble. You can see how I use the air bubble to my advantage and push up against the uh, next section, causing that to release. Now, this one did not release as easy as others have for me. And I don't know if it's the difference between latex and chalk paint, uh, if it's waiting, if it's the fact that this is leather on top of wood, I don't know. So in either case, this just took a little bit of time. But I love this transfer. I think this Rose Celebration transfer is absolutely stunning. And I actually prefer it in a smaller amount than doing an entire piece, I think. So I'm really glad that I opted to cut it up. Then you just take the plastic piece or your hand and you just burnish it down so that the little edges don't show. So it doesn't look like you took a sticker and stuck it on there. It looks like you painted it. Now here I am taking a bit of the um, extra piece that I had cut out and I am filling in a couple of spots with that um, here and there just to get that to look better. Now because I'm going to sell this trunk so I want to make sure that I, you know, do a good job with that. Now, once I had this done, I lost the footage on the second section, but I had cut out another piece uh, from that same transfer for just the top uh, left corner of the I laid out a few pieces and opted for just a smaller piece there. And then, you know, how it had another piece that was going to be the bottom of this piece. I had to go ahead and cut out a little bit more. So just getting kind of uh, pieces and parts of that transfer so that I can make sure that this looks complete. Um, I just finished that right here. It's a little bit of a, I don't know, fleur de lis or some kind of a, a twirly floral thing. So I got that done and then uh, added one word. I had a, a little bit of a split or bump in the leather so I wanted to cover that piece and so that was the last thing that I added there and uh, I pulled out a finger sander got some of this paint off of that brass <laughs> especially where the tacks were and where some of the hardware is where it's going to get bumped up anyway and um, that is how it looks the interior is amazing on this trunk it is just absolutely spectacular. It's in such good shape. Now, here we are with these gorgeous bed posts. Now, I had my husband cut them down to size, and the two fronts and the two backs are different design, which, of course, won't matter because you're not going to see them at the same time. But at the end of the day, I decided to put the two nice ones in the front and two plain in the back and keep the two fancy ones, since you're not going to see them, for some candlesticks in another video in the future. So this is how that trunk came out. I am going to have to completely spray the entire thing. Um, so I would love to know what you think about the stool and the beautiful broken mirror and this old 70s trunk. Check out the playlist in the description box. Hit like and share if you would. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love it if you would. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.